Bruchim uh, Aboim, thank you for coming. We uh, finished last week on the uh, topic of charity, tzedakah. We'll continue with that. Uh, Maimonides, the Rambam, says that there are eight degrees of charity. So he breaks it down like this. The highest degree uh, is to aid a person in need by offering him a gift or a loan, by entering into a partnership with him, or by providing work for him so that he may become self-supporting. So what he's really saying is stopping someone from becoming poor. That it's much better, just like to pick someone up takes much more effort. If you can stop someone from becoming poor, that's the greatest. Uh, investing in him, buying something from him, these type of things. The next highest degree is where the one who gives and the one who receives are not aware of each other. The third degree of charity is where the giver knows the recipient but the recipient does not know the giver. The fourth degree is the lower degree, is where the recipient knows the giver, but the giver does not know the recipient. The fifth is where the giver puts alms into the hands of the poor, but without being asked. The sixth is where he puts the money into the hands of the poor after being asked. The seventh is where he gives less than he should, but does so cheerfully. And the eighth degree is where he gives but resentfully with an attitude, but he gives anyways. Those are the eight degrees. So we see that a person, not only can a person give charity, but the way that you give charity makes a difference. The, it's interesting that there are 17 mitzvot connected with tzedakah, with charity. Six of them have to do with actually giving the money, but 11 deal with what we call gemilat chasodim, with kindness. And in a sense, even a rich man also needs charity. If a man's traveling, and or if you walk into a strange shul, people greet you or not, make you feel comfortable. So again, that all falls under the category of charity in the sense of making someone feel good. So charity is not always with money. It also is a sense of making a person feel good. We know that um, God's name of mercy, spelled the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He, that if you take the first two letters, the Yud and the He, he spells the name God, God's name of Ka, which is tough. What makes it gentle into mercy is adding the Vav and the He, the numerical value of 11, and that is the 11 mitzvot of kindness, which changes that severity into kindness. In fact, when you do the 6 and 11, together is 17, which is the gematri of tov, which is good. So for a person to reach goodness is by giving charity in that regard. Now the Gemara talks about some examples. They give the story of Marzutra. Marzutra was supporting a poor man, and every day what he would do is he would leave alms, money by his door. <clears throat> and, the rich, and the poor man did not know who his benefactor was. And one day, Marzutra had to go someplace, and his wife wanted to go as well. So he was a little bit late. And the poor man was very curious as to who his benefactor was. So he waited behind the door. And when Marzutra and his wife came to the door and laid the money down, he quickly opened up the door. And when Marzutra saw that, he and his wife ran. And the, and the poor man chased them. He wanted to know who was helping him. And somehow, some way, in those days, they had um, ovens for the public that were big ovens, big enough for a person to go into. So there was an oven that had been turned off where the, Marzuch and his wife ran into the oven, and this is how they hid from the poor man who was trying to find out who the benefactor was. But the oven had not been shut off that long, and while they were standing in the oven, Marzutra's feet burned but not his wife's, which was very strange. They were in the same oven. So there were those who asked Marzutra, is your wife greater than you? And he said, it's not that she's greater than me. It's that her form of charity is greater than mine. When I give charity to a poor person, I give them money. They then have to go out and buy food. It takes time. When she gives charity, she gives food, and they're able to eat it right away. So her merit is even greater than mine. The Gemara also mentions 
the fact that um, if a person says that I'm giving, tells a poor person, I'm giving you this charity because I have a son who is sick and I want to give you the charity so on that merit of that mitzvah, my son will have a speedy recovery. The Gemara says about this person that he's a tzaddik. So, as we see, you can give charity even for the wrong reasons. The a person gives charity even for honor. It's still considered to be charity and he still gets a mitzvah. It's not on the highest level, as we've mentioned, but it's still charity. But then, the commentaries say the reason why he's called a tzaddik, not just a person who's done a good deed, is because his son's not sick or he may not even have a son. But what he's doing when he says to the poor person that I'm giving you this on the condition that my son will have a recovery, he's making the poor person act like he, you're doing me a favor. Please take the money so that my son will have a recovery, even though he either doesn't have a son or his son's not sick. And in this way, the poor person feels like he's done him a favor instead of the other way around. And that really becomes the idea. There are some people, there are some opinions that say a poor person doesn't go to purgatory because life for him is purgatory. Life for him is hell. And therefore, he's already had all of the atonement that he needs just by living. And to make a poor person's life even more difficult really is inexcusable. Now, another story based on charity is of a, of a great rabbi who there was a knock on the door and the poor man was there. And when he saw the poor man, he told his wife to quickly give the poor man some food or some money, whichever it was. And then he said, do it quickly so when our children have to beg for food, that people will give, treat them the same way. And she was taken back by that statement. And she said to him, why are you cursing our children? And he said, I'm not cursing our children. The, the world, life is a circle. He who is rich today is poor tomorrow, and vice versa. And a person needs to know that, that all that goes around comes around. That many times how you treat people is how you will be treated. And if not you, your, your descendants. And this becomes important for a person to know that all of this is one connected circle of life. Now, the question becomes also, when is the best time to give charity? And how often? The Rambam says, Maimonides says that, let's say a person was to give $365 a year in charity. So should he give it once, so to speak, get it over with? Rambam says no, that a person should give every day. So whatever you're going to give, give some every day. Get yourself accustomed to doing so. And if a person's going to give, again, when, when's the best time to give? Again, there's a story told of the Tzemach Tzedek and the Alter Rebbe, the founder of Chabad Hasidus, that the Tzemach Tzedek was brought up by his grandfather. And even after his death, somehow, some way, there was a communication between Tzemach Tzedek and his grandfather, even when he went to the next world. And there was a time when he saw his grandfather's face, and it seemed to be troubled. And he didn't know why. And one day on the way to the prayers in the morning, the Tzemach Tzedek was stopped by a poor man. And the poor man asked him for some money as a loan so that he could go to the market and buy produce so that he could sell it and make some money. And the Tzemach Tzedek said to him, he was on his way to prayer, to see him after prayers, and he would give loan him the money. And he went to the synagogue, he went to shul, and he put his talit on. And then he thought to himself, that's ridiculous. By the time I give him the money, all the best produce will be gone. And people that want to buy, well, all the customers will be gone. He took his talit off, went and found the poor man, gave him the money. And then he went back to pray. And that day when he saw the face of the Alter Rebbe, it was happy. Because he had done it the right way. So one of the things that a person should know is that there are different opinions as to when. But there is an opinion that before a person starts prayer, that what he should do is put some money into the pushka, 
into a charity box. And this way he starts off, so to speak, on the right foot. Also at the end of Pesuke de Zimra that we say every day in the prayers of uh, the opening prayers in our, in our davening, we say the words, Osher v'yakovod milfanecha, that wealth and honor are before you, and you, matamosha bakol, and you rule over everything. We're saying that everything belongs to God. In fact, it says, Hashem, Oritz Mlo, that the earth and everything is God's. How do we get it? By making a blessing, by using it for a mitzvah. But when we say this blessing, that's where you'll see people go in the middle of davening to the pushka, and they'll put money in. That's another propitious place for a person to give tzedakah. I give it both. I think that becomes the key. They, uh, in fact, tell an interesting story of the Rablevi Yitzhak of Bardichev. Rablevi Yitzhak was known as the great lover of Israel. He was the uh, person who fought against God all the time for the benefit of Israel, and he always found merit in everything people did. And when people would go see a rabbi, a great rabbi, as they do today, to get a blessing, they would come and put their request on a piece of paper. They would write it out called a kvittel. And then they would also give what was called a pidyon. They would give a donation to the rabbi at the same time. And this was the customary thing to do. And one day, there was an almana, a widow, that came to see Rabbi Levi Yitzchak. And she handed him her kvittel, her, her note. And Rabbi Levi said to her, where's the pidyon? Where's the money? She says, I have none. He gave her back the note. And he said to her, when you have money, come see me. And his shamus was there, his, his uh, sexton, his attendant, and uh, was taken back by this. And the woman left and came back shortly thereafter. Took her a little while. She came back with a penny. And she took that penny and she handed it to Rablevi Yitzchak and he then took the kvittel and read it and gave her a blessing for the needs that she was requesting. After she left the sexton, he couldn't hold back. And he said to Rablevi, you love money so much that you made the poor woman go out and beg to get a penny that means so much to you. And Rablevi, with the softest demeanor, said to his shamus, God forbid. He said, who am I? What am I? Do you really think that I have the ability to bless someone and the blessing comes true? I can say what I want. I have no way to deliver that message to heaven. It stays here with me. But when someone gives tzedakah, when someone gives charity, that charity becomes a vehicle. And that's the vehicle that carries that request that the person made, that mitzvah, up to the highest levels of heaven. And that is what makes the blessing successful. I can give it. But the real power comes from that donation that the person gives. And when it comes with difficulty, how much more so? As it says in Pirkei Avot, the Fitzara Agra, according to the difficulty is reward. And with all the sacrifices that are mentioned in the Torah, the meal offering, just simple flour, is considered to be the nefesh, the soul that gives, the greatest of all sacrifices. Because a person is actually giving the bread off his table. And that's where the term soul is used, not by the animal, not by the bird. But when a person gives from his own table to God, that's considered his soul. And God answers that. In fact, the high priest, that's the sacrifice he would bring in the morning and in the evening. This meal offering of the poor person. Again, to make the poor person feel great in the fact that he's giving the same sacrifice as the high priest, the greatest spiritual leader of, of the nation. And the highest spiritual leader of the nation feels a little humbled that he's giving the poor man sacrifice. And the same act does that. So this we have to understand that charity is the greatest tool we have. And that's why there's no blessing. Because we don't need a blessing. It in itself is a blessing that it gives us. We don't need to make a blessing to do it. And again, may God always bless us that we're on the side of giving and not taking. And next week, hopefully we'll finish up with some more ideas on the concept and the great merit of giving charity uh, in this world and how it affects the next. Thank you so much for coming. God bless. Have a good Shabbos.